Okay, in this lovely container we have some sand and some vanadium metal. Um, it was put into this container for convenience. The Reds sponsor me. So what we're going to do first is we're just going to take this out. Um, I brought quite a bit of the beach home with me here. And hopefully we're going to physically separate this out and get a look at this metal for the first time in the light. Um, now, sort of semi, oh, not a mistake, but something in hindsight I shouldn't have done was um, we put it in an aluminium can and the aluminium can melted around it. So I think there'll be a large component of aluminium metal in the vanadium as well as the aluminium oxide from the, the slag of the aluminium and any unreactive aluminium. Um, as well as any vanadium pentoxide unreacted um, and the vanadium metal itself. Right, I'm probably going to need two hands for this. Just give me a second. Alrighty, this looks a lot nicer than I remember it looking like. Um, I remember at the beach at the time thinking that the slag looked pretty bad, um, but it looks pretty good. I think we might have broken up some of these larger pieces to fit them in the bottle, which is a bit of a shame. Oh, actually, they might have all been separate. I don't think they were fused together. Um, but you can see some nice, like, sort of, like this piece here is a very spherical piece. Uh, it's not, obviously... Um, immediately recognisable as vanadium. Not that vanadium is all that recognisable, but it does get a sort of oxide sheen on it that makes it sort of rainbowy coloured, um, which this doesn't have. But, you know, that's probably just because there's a whole lot of other stuff in it and there's a whole lot of aluminium oxide all fused together with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to digest a few of these pieces in hydrochloric acid. The reason I'm not going to chuck it all in is because I think there's a high chance of us... Um, when we strip the aluminium oxide and aluminium from these sort of chunks that they'll just fall apart and we'll get just some vanadium powder which is cool but you know it isn't as nice as these sort of pieces so, so we're running the sand and metal mix through the sieve thing you can see we get our lumps of metal here and the sand which you obviously can see that's full of all this black metal but um oh maybe if i mm, digested this all in nitric acid i'd be able to recover it all but um yeah, uh, plus we're going to get a whole lot of carbonates from the sand and iron, There's lots of iron oxide in the sand and stuff, so we're basically irretrieve all these pieces, but um, yeah, it's not a huge loss, still got lots of metal here. Okay, looking a bit closer at one of the pieces, you can sort of see what I'm talking about with this iridescence, and I'm sort of seeing it gets nice purple and sort of blue sheen to it, that's caused by a really thin layer of of the oxide, um, more thicker layers of the oxide, um, you know, give this a sort of yellow colour because you saw the colour of the vanadium pentoxide was a um, very orangey yellow. So that's good we get to see that, that's great. What we're going to be adding to it is this, which is our um, distilled hydrochloric acid in the distillation that I had to abandon because it started pouring with rain. Um, so this is iron free and pretty much all salt free, so that's nice. Um, even though in the end, really, we're going to pick up some, so much iron from the sand anyway, so that's going to be a lot more than the um, the iron and hydrochloric. So kind of a waste of time and waste of being caught out in the rain, but. Okay, after overnight, you can see that it's basically died down the bubbling and uh, the solution has taken on a very transition metal sort of bluey green, which has to be from the vanadium really. So um, perhaps the oxide layer reacted with the hydrochloric a little bit. Um, and we've got a tiny bit of the vanadium in solution. Um, and I've taken a bit of the metal out and um, you can see that, uh, yeah, there's a lot of sand really on the outside that fused to it, it was really hot. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a bit of sandpaper to it and see if I can get a bit of more of a shine to it. Um, there's a lot of yellow oxide layer on there as well. So I'll see if I can get it looking shiny. Okay, so the pieces broke up during sanding so they're not that sort of um, together in a sense. But 
but we're getting some really nice metal here. Um, this piece is pretty much a solid bit of metal. I've got, still got a lot of slag to remove, but you can sort of start seeing now how nice that sort of piece is. This one's interesting as well. You can see here how there's a whole lot of slag around the outside. Then right in the middle there's a nice sort of uh, rectangular piece sort of sticking out. So I can pull all, all this black mass here out and just get this little nice colour. And you get that, that iridescence I was talking about at the very start. Um, yeah, you can sort of see that now really well. So that's uh, vanadium metal. Alright, it's been oh, a day or two once these things have been in the acid. You see the small bits that I sanded down have turned the hydrochloric acid a very green colour. Um, and something interesting has happened here. I haven't picked this up and swirled it yet, but you can see there's some red in there. Um, they're probably all the colours all blend together when I swirl this around, but there's definitely a red, which mixes in with this green and sort of becomes a sort of a brown colour, I guess. But um, I don't know where it's from either. Maybe another oxidation state of vanadium, but why it's changing, I wouldn't know. Um, yeah. So the uh, vanadium slag's been in the uh, hydrochloric acid for about a week, a week and a half. Uh, at one point, the solution did go entirely sort of a browny red, but when I added more hydrochloric acid, it instantly turned back to this green colour. So if someone wants to explain that, that would be lovely. Um, and while I assume it is... <sighs> It's probably dissolving more of the vanadium than it is dissolving um, the oxide slag, which is a bit annoying and a bit unexpected. So I'm going to um, filter out these chunks and wash them, and I've decided that the best way really is to just physically remove the um, all the uh, slag and oxide um, with just a chisel and or a screwdriver and a hammer and pick out the bits of metal. So I'm going to do that over the next few days. So this is one of the um, the sort of circular pieces that flew out of the um, the thermite as it reacted. And one of the best ways I've found to get the vanadium out of this is uh, to hit it with a hammer. Gently enough, so it sort of shatters, and then from there we get our piece of vanadium out. Yeah, and you can see. I mean, I've ruined that now, but for the sake of showing you, bits like there, you can see our metal, and that is the vanadium metal that we have produced in our thermite reaction. And I've gone through and I'm, I'm collecting all those little bits. So I'm kind of done here, I think. Well, I obviously haven't got all the uh, metal out of the slag, but I've definitely shown that we've got some nice pieces of metal. And these are probably the nicest pieces I'm going to get out of the slag because there's no other bits of slag big enough. Um, but I really like these two sort of pieces here. Um, they're very small, but they do show the very um, the iridescence. The, the, they've got some nice purple on them, some nice yellows on them of the, of the vanadium metal as it oxidizes in air. Um, that's really cool. Um, so how would I recommend extracting the vanadium here? Well, forget about chemical methods. Probably the best method is um, run it through a bowl mill and that will uh, crush up all the slag and turn all the, um, the black horribleness into just a fine powder but all the vanadium metal will be able to will stay in these chunk forms and then you can just sift them out. Um, you also get some lumps of aluminium especially if you do this in an aluminium container like I did which I don't recommend. Um, these are bits of aluminium and um, they're very easy to chemically differentiate, differentiate them from the vanadium just chuck them in acid and if they go nuts they're aluminium. Um, but in, in practice they're actually quite easy to tell apart from vanadium as well. Um, they look 
the metal does look substantially different. You can't really get that on camera very well, but there's no color at all, and there's a sort of a often a white oxide section on them. So, so yeah, so we have now have some vanadium metal. I mean, the reason I'm not painstakingly getting every little bit of vanadium out is because, well, I don't really have a use for it. Um, I do, however, have, I have, however, found a patent that um, is all about selective extraction of vanadium, um, which turns it back into vanadium pentoxide. Um, it uses phosphoric acid, which I don't have, but I can buy, I believe. So I will link it below, have a check it out and see if you want me to have a go at it. Um, it leaches out, it'll leach out all the vanadium from this and possibly even the rest from the sand that has all these little black bits of vanadium still in it. Okay, I'll leave with a bit of demonstration of uh, the colourful world of vanadium using this green solution of vanadium chloride of some description uh, made from, uh, you know, reacting the vanadium slag with hydrochloric acid for a few weeks. Um, in the middle here we have some distilled water and if we add our green, this is still acidic because there's still some hydrochloric acid in it, but if we add it to just plain distilled water, we see that it goes blue. Add a little bit more and get a blue solution. Um, here we have some concentrated hydrochloric acid, so if we increase the pH a little, see that it goes more yellow. And if we increase this more, it would go a bit more of a red, but it seems to react with nitric acid, and my sulfuric acid is black. But here we have some uh, sodium hydroxide solution, so if we um, increase the pH, sorry, that was lowering the pH, increasing the pH here, and we're obviously going to form some sort of insoluble hydroxide. But it is once again, a totally different color. So we see quite a wide range, a spectrum of uh, colors here from vanadium, just by changing the pH around, um, which is why it's it's quite a wonderful metal to work with. Um, you can get purples and blues and reds. Um, just changing oxidation states from it. Um, so, I hope you enjoyed this episode once again, and I'll see you uh, another time for vanadium chemistry or something completely unrelated. <laughs>